welcome back so we are currently discussing about uh, module 2 which is more from the perspective of delta lake understanding the delta lake in detail so as part of the second uh, i mean in the previous video we have already seen the basics of delta tables and we have already understood uh, how it is very similar to the sql kind of programming so in this video let us understand some advanced concept of delta tables uh, where uh, you see a couple of operations which you might have not seen in the sql like uh, programming uh, so we will understand those delta table concepts uh, as part of this uh, advanced uh, delta table concepts so before uh, proceeding if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notifications so let's get started So in the in this uh, delta table video advanced uh, we will uh, I mean uh, as part of the basics in the previous video uh, we have already explained uh, very basics of uh, delta table creations updations insertions and deletions and uh, other operations uh, which are very similar to the SQL like features so it is very similar commands and uh, it's very too easy to understand if you are a SQL person however uh, in this video let us learn uh, very specific features about data lake so these you might have not heard of uh, like if you are a, just a pure sql person and never heard about data bricks so you might have i mean these concepts might be completely new for you and slightly uh, we would say uh, i mean uh, difficult to understand sometimes uh, so at, at the beginning but uh, we would recommend you to please follow the steps and uh, practice so that you'll understand uh, these all the uh, special specific features uh, of uh, delta table and uh, these are the features which makes uh, delta tables uh, more optimized uh, more uh, kind of a performance intensive operations we can make using delta table and uh, so basically these are the features which gives the power of uh, delta tables right so let us uh, see what are those uh, features right so delta table advanced uh, these are the key features that you can see and we can discuss in a uh, quick demo uh, after this uh, video I mean after this uh, slide so that we are seeing so uh, we will see start with optimize so if you are having a lot of uh, many files right so in few of the cases what happens is when you are uh, writing to a table and as you know like uh, delta table is physically it stores a data into in, in a file format so when you are writing into a table and uh, definitely you will have a issue of like if you are going on inserting or updating right so it will create a new files and definitely will have a lot of uh, small files getting created so during that time uh, like definitely if there are a lot of lot of many files uh, obviously when you are doing uh, selecting a record or if you want to kind of update any record the search uh, and uh, update uh, uh, searching for the selection searching for the updation so since uh, there will be a lot of uh, files it takes a lot of file i mean a lot of time to uh, for the program to pa parse all these uh, small files right because it, it has to open each of the small files and check and again go to the next file and check so that is a i mean uh, i mean it is a performance intensive operation we would say so that is a reason so we need to kind of uh, compact uh, these uh, files into a uh, into a i mean this small check of files into a one particular file so uh, we will have that compaction like hundreds of files will become like uh, two to three files uh, and when you are reading or writing instead of reading hundred files you can read two to three files uh, which will drastically uh, bring down your uh, I mean latency and uh, increases the performance so that's where we use the optimize uh, command okay and also there is a something called a Z order so Z order specifically it is like a I mean if you are familiar with a SQL like a coding or programming right so z order is very similar to like a, a index uh, indexing the table that what we can call right so basically z order is uh, usually used uh, with the combination of optimize so that we will see in the upcoming uh, demo but uh, usually like z order is an optional value that can be used along with optimize and uh, what exactly happens when we use a z order is uh, z order will be run on a particular uh, say column right so you can use z order by some id column usually it is will be id column or you can use any other column as well so when you do that what happens is it will bring down i mean it will kind of a 
internally it will kind of a partition the similar kind of data into one place it is like organizing the books alphabetical order or organizing a, a menu or table according to some sort of a like uh, items that you want to find right so it it just orders uh, that uh, uh, like uh, files or the items uh, in, in that particular table so that it will become easy to uh, easy when you are searching it so that's what uh, z order does and uh, it is also increase the performance uh, basically because it indexes the tables and coming to the vacuum vacuum is nothing but it cleans up the stale data files uh, like uh, uh, we will see in the in, in uh, just a while uh, we will see in the demo how Databricks uh, will store the history of last 30 days by default. Okay, so if you are uh, inserting any record and if you are up go on updating those records, uh, so that history will be stored for last 30 days. You can get that back. Uh, so if the data is updated uh, like one week back or 15 week back, uh, and you get the older version of the data can be still retrieved by using. I mean by doing a time travel like a history command there is a uh, I mean there is a uh, you can time travel so we will see that in the how do we do a time travel we will see in the demo but uh, we can do a time travel so basically vacuum uh, will uh, I mean if, if, if you don't want to keep that uh, time travel for like 15 days 20 days 30 days you can uh, cut short that to say like seven days also okay so you can cut short that vacuum to seven days and uh, so what you are doing is you are uh, limiting your time travel to last seven days if you are vacuuming so vacuum basically it clear cleans up the stale data and disables the time travel after i mean be, be, uh, behind before uh, the date you specify right if you are vacuuming last seven days of data after uh, before seven days of data so what happens is the data which is older than seven days uh, will lose the time travel capacity so that what that's what the vacuum means so I know, I mean, this might be confusing at this point if you are new to this concept, but uh, this will get clear when you start practicing and uh, we will show in the demo. And restoring is nothing but backing up the backing up to the older version. As I was mentioning, like if you accidentally kind of a deleted data or updated data and you want to do a time travel and uh, restore to a previous version or roll back to a previous version of that data, so you can pretty much uh, do that using the restore command uh, so where it clearly shows uh, how your data is uh, kind of having a different versioning and you can do a time travel and also restore or roll back to the older versions so with this uh, let us uh, jump to the demo quickly now so first uh, to understand the concepts uh, let us do some uh, let us let us create uh, create a table uh, which similarly which we have created in the previous video like a student's table we will create so insert some six records uh, and also update couple of records and delete couple of records right and also again uh, create some temporary table and uh, merge uh, some uh, records to the student's table from the updates table so let us uh, just to the by the interest of time let us do this operation at one shot right and the cluster is at one touch so if you are uh, starting a cluster i mean the terminated cluster it will take uh, usually like it will take four to five minutes so i'll come back after four to five minutes here so now that our cluster is started so we'll just start to execute uh, this table and uh, the table is already created as you can see right and that's where you're getting the error and uh, next uh, let us kind of examine the table that we have created in detail so we have a command called a describe command so which will help us here so dis describe extended student so like it will give the metadata of the table so let us understand what how what what exactly we mean by the metadata so metadata is nothing but it is a day i mean data about the data that means the data about this table so what exactly the features of this table right as you can see it is having these three columns so that's not important but if you see other details right where exactly the location of this table so which is quite important for us right and also what is a provider provider is delta so as you as we have explained right in the previous video so uh, any 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 table that you create in databricks will be of a delta format and owner is root and is managed location yeah this is a managed lo location because we are not uh, uh, mounted or you are we are not referring uh, or we are not storing the data externally we are storing within the databricks that is a databricks file system 
so that's why it is the managed location is true and also it is a it says it's a managed table so that's i mean like a, what is a version of the table and uh, other details you see here right and uh, there is something very similar to this extended i think it will be a detail describe detail students right so let us see the difference so it is very similar to that uh, what we have seen but it, it just shows in a tabular kind of format right which is kind of a more readable for us okay and you might be wondering like you have seen the dbfs right what exactly the dbfs is right so so dbfs is a native uh, databricks uh, file system so if you're not specifying anything physically your data is stored in, within the databricks file system so if you want to see the databricks file system one way is to kind of uh, navigate here uh, and go to the dbfs and you will definitely see the table uh, where you are uh, i mean the location of the location where your table might be created right if you go to the high warehouse and uh, this you see the students and you see the all the part files here so these are all the part files which is uh, what is important here is to please observe these are dot parquet file format any uh, delta table will be stored in the parquet format and uh, there will be delta log also if you go to the delta log it will store your uh, transaction history like uh, like what exactly the previous version of the data and what exactly it has changed uh, basically the versioning detail right it shows in the form of uh, stores in the form of json and crc file format so that's kind of uh, important to understand here the how the parquet file is stored and how the what is delta log uh, so this is quite important to understand so this is one way of uh, kind of uh, seeing what is there inside the dbfs and definitely the other way we can also see is uh, let us uh, show you that is uh, just copy this location what you see here and uh, just do the dbutils.fs dot ls and just in the single quotes you can specify this location and you can see we are getting error the reason is uh, this is a sql notebook and we cannot run simply the any commands right so let us convert this you know right we can use a magic command here so if you convert this to python so definitely you will be able to see the path of this so basically all the tables uh, by default will be created in user hive warehouse and whatever tables you are creating so it will just uh, create in this warehouse uh, folder and you can see all the whatever we saw in the navigation you are seeing the same things here there's a delta lake folder and uh, there are like parquet files these are all the parquet files where the exact data is stored and uh, the metadata is stored in the that's versioning details and all it is stored in the delta log so that becomes important to understand what is how how physically the delta tables are stored so this is uh, for managed tables it will be a dbfs for external tables or unmanaged tables uh, it might be a data lake blob storage s3 bucket so those details we will see in the feature videos and uh, so next uh, as uh, we were discussing right we will discuss about the optimize command so which uh, how, how to execute the optimize command so basically as we have uh, told optimize is specifically for uh, kind of uh, compacting a large number of files to a smaller chunk of files so that you can access it more easily so this is how you optimize it so just uh, it's very simple right you can just optimize and then the table name simple as that and if you execute uh, it shows uh, so number of files added is one but number of files removed so this is very very important very very important to understand what exactly happening here is uh, it has compacted the five files into one file okay so if you kind of a truly kind of a want to see this if you execute this will be able to see less number of files basically that what the less number of files means the read and write will be faster it will compacting the data into a less number of files here so and also there is an optional uh, command uh, that's called z order so z order is ba basically for a, on top of a particular column so it usually we will do a indexing right so it's very similar to indexing and uh, 
and indexing will be usually done by the id column so very similar to that and we do a z order here and it shows statistic number of files added removed whatever like you can if you split these details and see there are a lot of meaning you can derive from this okay this is about the optimize and z order and uh, there is also a history command okay so let us uh, see what exactly that uh, particular history command is right so let us take a new cell and uh, describe history student so this history command is quite interesting that means uh, you are able to see here uh, last seven version of the student table student work student table is having seven versions i mean if you see the first version is uh, basically creating a table sec uh, i mean zeroth version right so zeroth version is creating a table and then four version you have written something and fifth version you have deleted something sixth version is something like you have merge seventh version we have done some optimize and this will be a sequential order so if you want to kind of uh, roll back you can roll back to any operations or you can do a time travel to any version of your choice so basically first it's important to understand what is a history i mean how to how to check the different versions of a particular table so when you do a describe history student that means you are kind of a getting the history of that student's table so to understand the versions and now say for example you want to time do a time travel to the version uh, say version 4 okay so let us do the time travel uh, so this data i mean when you do a select star from students version as of so these are all the keywords version as of is a keyword and you need to give which version you want to do a time travel let me time travel for the version 4 that means whatever you see here it is the record i mean these are the records which were during the version 4 that means uh, these are the data which is before doing this optimize merge delete whatever you do this operation you did this operation as part of 5th 6th 7th 7th version right so you are skipping all this and going to the fourth version of the data so that is the meaning of it and when you do a roll back uh, like when you want to do a roll back right suppose like let's let's take a example by accidentally someone deletes this particular table so for example like delete from students that means like without like uh, by accident someone forgot to give the where condition so at that time what happens is it deletes our entire data and uh, if you do a select star from data select star from this table you can see here uh, there is no data so you know, if you are in a typical sql scenario right so sql databases or uh, sql server or data warehouse you'll be kind of a, you can retrieve a data but there is lot of uh, background things you have to do to a kind of a roll back uh, to the previous version of the data but here it is quite simple how do we do that is uh, so we can do a restore of the table using a restore command so how do we do that it's just a simple uh, command again it is a restore table and give the table name here it is students and 2 you want to restore table to what version as of say want to do a, like what was the pre- latest version is version 7 right so i can version as of 7 so now you get the get your data back okay and uh, if i query the table now you get the entire data let, let me do a select start in this table and you have the data here as of version 7 right. so finally we will discuss uh, the vacuuming right so vacuuming of the command so as we told like uh, we can see here right like uh, you can do a, you can do a time travel or uh, take a version using this one this command also to version as of 7 or you can use a version as of time stamp and then you can give the time stamp so that's also possible but uh, it's also always better to kind of uh, 
use a version using this history table get a version and do a rollback and uh, so as you may, as you see here right there are a lot of versions getting created and how, how many days this version will get stored because it cannot st store this version forever right because there will be some limit for the storage so how much it will store is it will store for by default for, for last 30 days if you are doing many updates insert whatever right on the students table uh, you can do a time travel for the say uh, like 30 days uh, back so by default like the older like 31st days uh, back data it will keep on purging or uh, archiving it delete that uh, data from the account so uh, like by default vacuuming is 30 days that we understood now but uh, say for example you do not want to keep that uh, even for 30 days sometimes your data is volume is huge you want to save the memory and also improve the performance of the table uh, because uh, of the volume you want to kind of uh, get rid of the volume and increase the performance uh, at the time explicitly you can vacuum for uh, lesser than 30 days also so for that again the command is very simple just type in vacuum and students and then retain suppose you want to retain uh, the data which is just uh, like seven days uh, right so if you want to do a seven days it it will not take seven days actually so you have to mention in hours so seven into like whatever uh, number of seven into 24 right so it will come around 168 hours so you can pretty much uh, do this and run this command so it will just uh, keep the data i mean uh, timetable enabled time travel enabled for only seven days by default is 30 days again okay and let us try to kind of uh, queue less than uh, 168 like let us try to queue 160 or something and try it out so we said seven days right but uh, by default if you see it is 168 hours only that means it is seven i mean seven days the limit basically the by default the limit is 168 days so why databricks is keeping this limit so if someone uh, kind of uh, runs this vacuum uh, like say zero day zero hours or one hour right so it will lose the time travel capacity and if someone again accidentally updates or deletes a table so we are unable to restore to the previous versions of tables you cannot get the data back right so that's where uh, databricks always recommends you to keep 168 hours so that is usually like seven days basically right so that uh, whenever there is a uh, data issue you can go back so still i mean if you want to kind of uh, do it for like lesser than 168 you can still do that okay but uh, you have to set some uh, functions here so with that functions uh, um, like you can uh, basically these are configuration functions that we have to enable basically right so let us try to do that and let us see so basically this is a set so we are setting the configuration detail uh, to kind of retention duration enabled false and one more is vacuum logging enabled true so after you run this to, to configuration you are actually forcing the databricks to uh, remove this 168 hours of check and uh, you can do a time table even for uh, i mean you can do a you know, vacuum even for two days or three days of data right? so basically before doing uh, like uh, actual uh, I mean before vacuuming uh, retaining only zero hours right so we are using something called as dry run here so dry run is nothing but uh, you are actually checking how many files might get deleted or how much data might get deleted so dry run is a test run basically you are not actually running it but you are getting collecting the stats before actually running it so you can make a decision whether it's a good to do it so as you can see if you uh, I mean uh, do a dry run for zero hours you will lose all these eight files Right? And if I do the dry run for like say 16 hours, which I have not done anything before 16 hours, you can see here uh, there will not be much records or much files here. Okay, there are no files. So that means uh, if you are doing 16 hours, there is no loss of data. If you are doing 0 hours, definitely there is a loss of data. So that is how uh, you can kind of uh, even go beyond the 168 hours and uh, come come less than 168 hours basically to do a vacuuming uh, but uh, which is which is i mean absolutely not recommended unless there is some strong reason of performance or like some volumetric details but still uh, 
I mean, you should not get convinced. Uh, like uh, going, uh, I mean, coming be below 168 hours, so which is a better breaks recommendation, strong recommendation, we would say. So this is about a vacuuming. And uh, just if you can quickly recap, uh, we have learned about uh, optimizing. Okay, and uh, like basically how to compact and we have also see how to describe the tables and uh, to check the versions like we use a history command right like uh, if you come back and see here uh, we have done the history command okay so with that history command we can just uh, see the number of versions right like as you can see here we can see the number of versions yeah and also we have seen how to once you know the version, you can restore the table to a particular version so that also we have seen and what is the importance of vacuum and what is the default, uh, I mean, the number of hours, uh, the limit basically is uh, 168 hours and what is the default is 30 days uh, vacuuming what will happen in Databricks by automatically and still you can try overwrite using this configurations but not recommended and dry run is something you can run with vacuum to check how many files might get affected. So this is all about uh, Delta table advanced concepts, so which is quite important if you are uh, learning Delta table, especially for a maybe for an interview purpose or maybe for a practical project. So, so it is very, very important concepts uh, when you're dealing with the Delta tables. Hope it was useful. Thanks for watching.